everybody, welcome to another episode of Talk the Talk. Uh, to start things off, this is a first. Uh, never been behind the wheel of a BMW M Series car. I've been in the passenger seat of this particular one before and was really impressed with what it had to offer. So hopefully I'm just as impressed when I'm actually in control behind the wheel and trying to tame this beast. Uh, this car in particular, it's a 2014 BMW M4. So it's a start of the era where they started to put forced induction in the M series. Before that, they always had naturally aspirated engines, uh, something like the BMW E46 M3, they had individual throttle bodies. The E92, they went to a snarly V8, naturally aspirated as well. Um, so it was a real pure driving experience. When these things first came out, it was a little bit controversial. People were kind of throwing their arms up in the air, wondering why they went forced induction, but the power figures are there and on paper this thing is absolutely amazing. 425 horsepower out of the factory running a peak boost of around 18 pounds. Uh, 0 to 100, 4 seconds flat. Quarter mile, 12 seconds flat. That's um, talking if you've got the 7 speed dual clutch transmission like this one here. Something as simple as a remap of the ECU, you can see figures of over 500 horsepower from this thing. It's an inline six cylinder engine, a three liter with a twin turbo setup. So you could say it's kind of like the modern day Euro 2JZ. I have a feeling that as these cars start to go lower and lower in price, uh, you're really gonna see a lot of people doing modifications to this. A lot of the younger scene getting into it as well. And it's gonna be pretty crazy in 10 years time what's gonna be going around. Styling wise, this thing looks like an absolute beast. Uh, the front end of it compared to your normal 4 Series is just really, really aggressive. The front bar's still got the sleekness, but it's got all these cuts and lines in it and angles. Really makes it look menacing, especially when it's coming at you in the rear view mirror. It's got the carbon fiber roof, which is actually standard. The option is to have a normal metal roof with a sunroof. But um, the carbon fibre looks absolutely amazing across the whole roof line of this car. And it's really cool because they actually keep the lines from that speed bump in the hood, travelling all the way over the roof and then back through the boot as well, which you actually lose if you option out and get the roof with the sunroof. Now let's downshift and see what BMW actually has to offer. flat stick around the corner and it just handles so well cuts off the power a little bit but you can pretty much go flat foot in this thing you can have so much confidence the suspension of the thing is really nice it's harsh but not too harsh that you're bumping around everywhere you got your nice carbon fiber brace in the engine bay it wraps right around like a boomerang and the car feels really really stable but if you're not actually going full throttle, if you're just cruising around, it feels really nice as well. It's pretty much the perfect blend of luxury and sports performance. So the mix between performance car and luxury car isn't just from the outside aesthetics and the actual performance that the car delivers, how the power is given. It goes on through the inside as well. These seats, the white leather, it just looks amazing. It looks like something out of a Rolls Royce or a Bentley but they've got the side bolsters that really, really hug you tight and it just feels like you're in a Recaro seat or something like that. Saying that at the same time, the bolsters don't stick out so wide that when you get out the car, you're gonna be ruining them every time you get out of them. So I've got a few more twisties up here. Go down a few gears, plant it. Oh, when those turbos kick in, you really just get pushed back in your seat. It's crazy how fast this thing accelerates and it does it so smoothly. You get the sensation of the acceleration, but as I say with newer cars, you don't quite get the sensation of speed. So you can be going 100 kilometers an hour, but it feels like you're only going 60 or 50 if you're just cruising along once you're actually up to that speed. As an option, you can get the carbon ceramic rotors. Uh, this one doesn't have that, it just has your standard rotors. But it's got the uh, four pot calipers at the front and the two pot calipers at the rear. A real nice blue paint with the M logo on there. 
the blue represents your standard type brakes that come with this car, which are pretty spectacular. And then if you opt out and get the uh, carbon ceramic brakes, you've got that gold caliper front and rear with that M logo on there. But I tell you what, just for driving around here, twisty roads, enjoying yourself, you don't really need much more than come standard with this. If you're gonna do some track days and stuff like that, really open her up and be using the brakes a lot in one drive without a rest, probably recommend to go the carbon ceramic, but as is, cruising around, Sunday drive, not really needed, and I'd imagine it'd be a very expensive option. Now let's see what this thing's like from a standstill. I'm not gonna do all the launch control, but we'll put our foot into it, see what she's like. A little bit of lag off the line. Just, oh. Oh. Man, she just wants to break traction. As soon as it takes off, you get a little bit of lag from the turbo, but once it's in, it feels like an NA all the way through. As you're shifting gears, you're not getting any drop off of power. It just keeps on going and going and going. Thanks to the newer technology that they've got in turbo systems now and turbo cars and the transmission, between those two, it really does feel like NA power delivery. Again, you barely hear the turbos. You hear a little bit of a whisper of it, but mainly you just hear the engine and the exhaust and you hear the fake engine as well. <laughs> um, those of you that know the M4 quite well, you'd know that you get the engine noise coming through the speakers downshift again, have a little bit of fun around these corners. As soon as you punch it, it just goes. This thing, it's really the whole package. And it's crazy. You can mod them and everything like that, but out the factory, it's just got so, so much to offer. And as I said before, you can just cruise around in it when you don't want to be driving like a madman and having fun like this. But there's always going to be that temptation there because it's just on tap. And the thing is you can park it in your garage at the end of the day and you don't have to worry about it. So to get something to perform like this from 20 years ago to match it, it's going to be something that you're always going to be worrying about. It's going to be something that's built. It's either going to cost a lot of money or a lot of time or both. And at the end of the day, it's engineered in a garage. Things are gonna go wrong. But with this out of the factory, you get your four or five year warranty on it. You just don't have to stress. You can just enjoy it. Obviously, it's gonna be expensive to maintain once parts go. I'd hate to think of what the dual clutch in this would cost. I'd hate to think what the brakes would cost to replace. But they're things that are gonna go on any car. While you're driving it, you just maintain it, do your oil changes, and in between, have a shitload of fun. Oh, absolutely amazing. Got that little rev match as well. And, whoa, there we go, wipers going off. The setting that I've got it in now, it lets the traction control off just a little bit, but it will save your ass. It doesn't, it doesn't give you all the trust, um, but still, it is scary when it lets go, because you've got a lot of power under your right foot, and in other modes, it'll keep traction and it'll cut off that power, but in this one, it just keeps it on. I just love the balance of smoothness in this car and aggressiveness when you're really giving it some. You downshift, fourth, third, second, just holds it right there. You accelerate and you get pulled back, but it's like all linear. It just feels so good, like pressure's getting put on your chest, but you're not snapping your neck back as it happens. And around these corners, it just, oh, it's so stable. It's so confidence inspiring. And it's so easy to drive. blown away really I'm absolutely blown away with this car I was really looking forward to driving it and it it hasn't let me down it's exceeded my expectations I was a little bit worried with it being a turbo car I've driven a lot of cars that I've driven in the past have been older turbos um, the RS that I drove that one there 
it delivered as well. I was a little bit worried about it being turbo. I thought you'd be laggy on and off the throttle between gears, but that thing was amazing. And this thing as well is just next level. Like I said, I was worried because of the uh, the automatic transmission as well that it take away from the driving experience. Because I'm really hardcore into my manual transmissions. I really love them and. I'm one of those people that put up the holy cross and like, you know, really praise the manual transmission and for being a real, a real driver's car, I've always said manual, but this, it's astonishing, love it. Well, that wraps up another video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. There's plenty more awesome content to come. If this is the first video that you've actually watched, check out my other ones. We've got some awesome reviews, uh, some footage of my cars as well, what's going on in the scene down here. Next up, we've got a few awesome cars, bit of a mix. We've got some Euro, we've got some Aussie muscle, we've got some American muscle, we've got some Jap. We've got pretty much everything on this channel with four wheels that's exciting. So until next time anyway, drive safe, enjoy, and I'll catch you then.